Last fall, um, when I was in India, I took a teaching with Geshe Thuban Pelsung on a Nagarjuna text called um, The Dream Tale. Uh, that's the short name. Um, and it's a text, a bodhicitta text, that gives five reasonings for how to um, develop love for sentient beings. So I've talked about this a few times before because it was a very moving teaching. And the teaching you can access on the IBD Blogspot um, website. Um, but the five reasonings are, first one, the familiar one, is to um, recognize that every living being is just like me and wanting to happy, be happy and not wanting to suffer. So recognizing our similarity. The second one is that um, we've already been through everything together. So if you think of all the comrades that you had in college or all the comrades that you had in a play that you did in high school, or we've all been in the hell realms together. We've all been in the hungry ghost realms together. We've all been in every realm together. So we're already comrades. And to begin to cultivate our minds and thinking about every living being has you know, already been my comrade. And so I can cultivate love because we've helped each other in so many different situations. The third one, I haven't, don't have the verse exactly memorized, but it's very beautiful. It, it starts as, not just once have I been born in every womb. And not just once has every being been born in my womb. Therefore, we are all family. So it's a way of pointing how, and we, as we do in the, the first meditation on the um, cultivating bodhicitta via the seven um, steps to cause and result effect, cause and effect method to develop bodhicitta, we recognize that we have, every being has been our mother. And taking it a step further and recognizing that we too have been a mother to every being. Therefore, we are all family. And Venerable Semke often uses the term the human family. And sometimes I think, really? But Nagarjuna, <laughs> Nagarjuna says, yeah, we are all family. So the sixth reason is the one I want to talk about today, though, where he says, I am fond of the Buddha. And the Buddha's total focus is on developing sentient beings. Therefore, because I am fond of the Buddha, I should be fond of sentient beings. And then the seventh one is, um, oh, it, because each of these beings around me are my gurus, they're my teachers. Because um, as I develop bodhicitta, as I develop you know, my good qualities, I am dependent on these other people. And that's the hardest one, and he spends many verses explaining that. But the sixth one I came to recently, I've been thinking about this because of an experience I had not very long ago. Um, one of our dear long-term Dharma friends, and one of my dear friends of many, 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 many years, 30 plus probably, um, visited the Abbey a few weeks ago with one of her friends from elementary school. They have been friends since they, I think, were in the second grade. And I've heard this woman's name for most of the 30 years that I've plus that I've known my friend. And when I was introduced, I immediately said, you are my friend, you love her, I love her, you're my friend. And it was just this immediate recognition and appreciation of this complete stranger why? Because she's one of the lifelong friends of my, my dear friend. And as I, it was a very nice meeting. It was lovely to meet her. That's not the point. What was interesting for me was how spontaneously I was willing to just love this person because she's a good friend of my friend. So what had been for me a little bit of an oblique reasoning, this fifth one, I am fond of the Buddha. The Buddha loves every single sentient being. <laughs> if I am fond of the Buddha and have love for the Buddha, then why wouldn't every being that the Buddha cares for be someone I want to care for too? So, I don't know, I've just been puzzling over that particular experience. And maybe you've had it too, where you've met a friend of a friend and instantly you don't check them out at all. You don't think, well, do I like this person? Do I not like this person? You don't ask for their resume. You don't, because you trust your friend and you trust your friend's love for your friend. So I've been working with can I on the basis of being fond of the Buddha who loves every living being equally. Can I cultivate on that reasoning 
a wish to open my heart and love all beings. So I wanted to share that. I've been thinking about it a while. Yeah, that's a, a very beautiful point. Shanti Deva makes the same one in um, in Guide to a Bodhisattva's uh, Conduct. And it always puzzles me why people uh, how to say uh, they're willing to spend millions, well not millions, but incredible numbers, uh, amount of money on Dharma teachers mm. or on offerings to the Buddha and to temples, but do not give to charities for people who are hungry or ill, and do not get along with the other people in the Dharma center. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because we've heard this teaching and yet, it's uh, it's a hard one for people to register, yeah. Because we always go, you know, okay, who's the highest? And I want to make offerings or be close to them. But actually, you know, who who's the one that the Buddha loves the most? It's all the sentient beings that we criticize and say are obnoxious. Yeah. So that says something about us, doesn't it? Yeah? It's like that we, we're not getting this point. But um, what you, you know, say what Nagarjuna said is definitely true. <laughs>